Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today is part two of our digital timing installation utilizing my Phytech throttle body because timing control is built in. It's actually built in in all um, fuel injection conversion throttle bodies. Now the unique thing about Phytech is you do not need a CDI box or a digital ignition like a 6AL from MSD for it to work. And that's what we're gonna prove today. So next episode, we're gonna install this and show you the differences. But for now, if it's your first time here, go to the first video because we need a specialized distributor, basically a two-wire distributor. We had to lock out the mechanical advance, lock out your vacuum advance if you have one, and then we installed it in the car. So today, we get to do the final wiring, but most importantly, what settings do we put in the handheld? It's really confusing when you first look at it. We're gonna go through that in detail. So subscribe if you haven't. If I've ever helped you out in the past, consider getting a hat or one of these crazy shirts. Links are below, but let's go hit the workbench and get things going. Now you all should have a Phytech installation manual. If you didn't keep it, hit them up for the different wiring diagrams. They have different versions, so HEI. You're going to look for the one that says with timing control. So one of them is a CDI box with timing control. That's next episode. This episode is conventional distributor with timing control. And what we need to focus on is this four pin connector. It looks like this. So there should be a four pin mating harness that you wire into your car. I happen to have an extra one, thank God, because I cut this wire and now I need that wire. So I'm gonna be rewiring my own and we're gonna do a couple of different variants because one, black wire has to go to the coil. That's on this episode. Next episode, black wire has to go to our CDI box wherever I choose to mount that. Haven't figured that out yet. So I'm not gonna cut that wire. I need extra wire, but uh, let me get to work show you what to come up with. It's gonna look janky, because again, it's not the final version. The final version is next episode. I promised you janky. That's janky. <laughs> so I wanted to leave extra wire, so when we eventually wire our CDI box, I don't know if I'm gonna go over here or go inside the cabin yet, so I just wanted to keep those extra wires there. But let's go ahead and jump in the car, get this going. Let's go ahead and get your hand held out, and we're gonna key on. So I'm keyed on. And we're going to go to initial setup, engine setup first, because I have to tell this thing, we're now two wire and coil. So we're going to save it, we're going to go back, and this is what I learned, go to dashboard, fully key off again. And what that does is it starts to save everything in the ECU when this blanks out. Any second now. There we go. That means it's saved in the ACU. So let's go ahead and key back on. Everything comes back in. And now we're going to go to setup but ignition setup. And right here we have to pick locked. And what that does is that temporarily allows us to set the distributor in the right spot so the computer knows we're in sync mechanically with the engine. So um, 30 degrees is our target. So right now I'm going to start the engine. Hopefully it starts. Hopefully I put the distributor back in the same spot. But once it starts, we go check the timing and we match the 30 degrees. And then we're good to go for this one step. So let's see if it starts. Yes, we have fire. All right, let me go show you on the engine what to look for. All right, team, I wanted to show you while the engine's not running, it's much easier for me to video, but this is what you're looking for. So if you have timing marks on your balancer, some of you do, some of you don't, don't freak out quite yet. I do, so I can actually just stab 30 right at that black mark. That's top dead center for me on the engine. Um, if you don't have these marks, 
you can get what's called timing tape and put it on your balancer. It's super helpful. The other thing you can do is get a timing light that you can adjust the advance on it, on the light itself, and you can still find 30 degrees. That's what you need to do. So after you do that, let's go ahead and talk about the different settings. Did you guys notice that flickering when I started the engine? That's because my coil wire was down here running parallel to all the EFI and all the other power wires. So when I ran it up there, all that flickering stopped. So good thing to keep in mind, keep those high energy coils away from your harnesses. All right, we should all be set at 30 degrees. And before you lock down your distributor, you have to test at 4,000 RPM. So you might need to grab a buddy to hold at 4,000. Lucky for me, my timing light has RPM on it. So I was able to hold it at 4,000, double check it. I was at 30 and I was. The default value worked for me. Let's say you were at 25 when you're at 4,000 RPM, you would adjust that five points up or down. I don't know which way. So let us know in the comments if you figured that out. Um, but when you go to key off, this will actually unlock itself. So you don't have to worry about coming back here and unlocking. But if you did this test at uh, idle for 30 and you turned off the car, you have to come back in here and lock it again to test at 4,000, just so you guys know. Now we need to talk about this distributor base timing and what we need to do uh, to change that if we need to, but we have to also talk about the values uh, of advance at different RPM levels, and we need to go back to the bench to compare our mechanical and vacuum advance number. Okay, the biggest question everyone's gonna have is how do we get to this base timing number? What does that mean? So great question. Now, what we need to figure out here is back to our original spec where I had a base timing of 13. If I had a vacuum canister at 15 inches of vacuum, I'd get about 15 degrees of advance. That means my idle, in theory, would be around 28. So, and that's fine. That's fine for idle. Now, let's talk about cruising. So, if we're cruising at 37 degrees because we're um, fully maxed on the mechanical, and it's the 24 plus the 13. That's how we got to 37. We're also gonna have some vacuum. It's not gonna be quite 15 degrees of advance. That was the maximum here. And I did read uh, for my engine, an ideal range is around 45 degrees advanced at cruise. So here's the thing with the Phytech unit. The computer can only advance 30 degrees over the base. So this is how you figure out your base. So if, if my target is 45, my base needs to be 15. I'm gonna go ahead and change mine to 17. And anytime you change it in the car, you have to redo what we just did about uh, locating your distributor and, and using this locked out method to find 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that in the car. So now that that's how you figure that out. So if your target here, it's all based on your all in um, target at cruise. Say your target's 50. If you subtract 30, your base needs to be at least 20. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now let's back out of here. So we go back to the main menu. And by the way, this is my backup handheld. This is for uh, my prior throttle body, but it has the same menu items in it. We're gonna go to tuning spark map yes i'm offline i'm not connected to anything so we haven't don't have any values in here yet so idle advance is exactly what we talked about the 25 to 28 range i'm gonna go ahead and do 25 for kicks and giggles i make it 26 why not cruise this is very helpful so this is our cruising vacuum that was this number down here i'm going to go ahead and use a 44 45 range let's go ahead and do 44 i think i read that online um someone had the same engine as me and they said 44 worked great and that was an adjustable vacuum canister that was not electronically tuned um, and then you can do wide open throttle at 3000 our my original was 37 i'm going to stay with 37 and this is where it gets more important, where you probably want to get on a dyno um, or pay attention to your ass dyno, because if you get any detonation or rattling or pinging, you need to dial that back. 
and you can play with that in different settings. I might add a degree here at higher RPM. And then wide open throttle at 1100. If you imagine, that's when you, right when you tip in. I'm going to say that's around 20, 22, something like that. So that's what I'll put in here. I'll just, do, I'll just start with 20. But down below, we have boosted. So if you're running boost. And the same menu from earlier is actually below that. So you can actually go to this page and do all your changes. Um, set your VR drift. This would be all populated in your handheld because I couldn't save it on this one's not attached to anything. But all your settings will be in there and you can actually use the same menu to lock it out, to reset. Uh, because, like I said, I have to do that in my car. I'm going to set it back to 17. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of what I just did or write them down. Go put it in the handheld in the car after I change the base to 17 and I'll show you how it works. All right, boys and girls. So here are my settings. And when you change a number, and this is different in this handheld too, it doesn't say idle or cruise or boost. So use my other um, thing for reference for you if you have the same uh, looking handheld so once you change a number don't forget to hit enter to send it to the ECU and once you key off here I'm, I'm going to go back to our main menu so back to our dashboard so here we go let's fire it up and see how it behaves Alright, so we scroll down. There's our advance doing his job. It should bounce around while it's at idle. How cool is that? So if we rev it a little bit, watch it change. Man, that's responsive. I'm digging it. Well, I hope you learned a lot there. I cannot wait to get on the road. Next episode, I hope to have some seat time to report out to you guys how it feels. I already know at Tippin, it's crazy fast response now versus before. Remember, last video, I just told you guys I did not have vacuum advance. So this is a huge jump for me. Now, some things to keep in mind. I highly recommend you talk to your engine builder or someone that has a similar spec as your engine if you've not done this before. I actually did reach out to David Butler, Butler Performance. Yeah, we talk a lot. Um, they do a ton of EFI setups and I asked him, well, what do you recommend? He had a good point. He said, I have fast burning uh, Edelbrock heads where versus standard Edelbrock heads or stock heads, uh, you have to roll back the advance a little bit. So at idle, I'm still around 23, 24, but most importantly at cruise, I rolled that back to 40 degrees versus 44. Um, the other weird thing I came across is wide open throttle. Uh, he said he used 36. And remember I said 37, because that's what I thought I was using. I looked at the bottom of my HEI distributor. It's engraved in there. 22 degrees at mechanical advance. This whole time I thought it was 24. Yeah, I find out these random things all the time. So I rolled back from 37, 38 range to 36 at wide open throttle, 3000. Um, the other things to do is I would recommend checking your IAC setting, especially if you already had the Fitech unit running and then you uh, went to timing control, double check the IAC value. But most importantly, subscribe if you haven't because next episode we're wiring up our CDI unit does put out more power, so I can't wait. Hopefully I have some seat time to report back to you and uh, obviously a little bit of wiring, but uh, you guys know the drill. Building fast, driving faster. See ya.